Hi, I'm Steve the Bread Guy, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a kind of loaf of bread at home, which uh, most people would think was impossible to do in their homes. It's one of these French sticks. These guys, um, you see them, you know, coming out of bakeries. They always look really, really fancy, and you go, well, I could never do that at home, right? Well, you can, actually, and uh, I've been trying to figure out how to do this. And one of the clues to uh, how these things are made is on the bottom of them. On the bottom, uh, they have a sort of um, uh, perforated granular kind of surface. Let's see if this, and the reason it's like that is because regular bakeries use this to make baguettes. Um, <clears throat> what you can see about this is, of course, it's shaped, so it makes sense that the bread would rise with a sort of rounded bottom. Um, have this kind of shape, right? Fits right in there. Um, the other thing about these, though, is that they're full of holes, right? Um, they're perforated. And the reason they're perforated is because these things uh, are made so that you can put dough into them and the steam in the oven will get at it from below as well as from above. Um, and that's important because that steam imparts a lot of heat to the outside of the bread and gives it that nice crunchy texture that you see here which caramelizes the um, outer dough and makes it nice and sweet as well. Well, um, obviously regular mortals like us don't have one of these things at home, but there is a way to do this uh, to get more or less the same effect. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, some people just buy, um, go to a fancy bread shop and they buy a shaped pan. Um, which you can use at home. And if you've got one of those, I've made another video showing you how to um, make this sort of bread with one of those. But if you don't, keep watching. I'm gonna show you how to do it. What you'll need is just a couple of things which you probably already have lying around the house. One is parchment paper. Another is just three jars, just regular jam jars, the kind of things which, you know, jam comes in or masonry jars, you know, the mason jars rather the sort of thing that you do canning and pickling in, or just, you know, any old jar will do. And what you want to do is we're going to take a pan with high sides like this, and we're going to give it that same kind of shape that you saw in the professional baker's pan. And the way we do that is we're just going to line up the jars on here. There we go. I'm just going to line them up like that, and then we'll take a piece of parchment paper, which can go into the oven put it there and then we'll put the dough in between and that will allow the dough to rise up in a rounded kind of way and uh, it'll have exactly the kind of shape that we want for this and I'll show you how to do the decorations on the top that part's easy so if you want to play along with me today just get three decent sized jars okay glass jars um, and a pan with sides because we don't want the bread to spread out too much and go get those and come back and I will show you how to make a French loaf at home. Okay, see you in a bit. All right, so we're ready to go. So the good news is that making one of these loaves of bread is just as easy as making a regular loaf of white bread. You'll need some white flour, some yeast, instant yeast, uh, some salt, and some water. That's all you'll need to get started. So the first step, same as all the other white breads that I make, is just two teaspoons of instant yeast goes in there, and then we're going to put some water onto it so that it'll activate. The water needs to be warm. It needs to be just warm enough so that when you put your finger into it, it just starts to hurt. The yeast are, you know, biological beings like us, and they don't like any kind of heat that we can't stand. So I'm just going to get uh, two cups of water. So here's one cup of hot water, and one more, and there's two cups of hot water. So, uh, and now I'm just going to leave this for uh, about 10 minutes. That's how long it'll take to um, activate. And uh, when I come back, there should be a nice sort of scum on the top, a froth that shows that the um, that it's working, uh, the yeast has woken up. So I will see you in 10 minutes. Okay, I'm back. It's been about uh, 10 minutes, and as you can see, there's a nice froth on the, uh, nice kind of scummy froth on the top of the yeast. Um, yeast and water, that means that uh, the yeast has come alive and it's ready to do work for us. 
So the next thing we need to do is just add two teaspoons of salt. Um, so I'll just quickly do this here. One, two, and then uh, all we need is the flour. So I'm using unbleached uh, white flour. One of the things about uh, the flowers you use is it really does matter which part of the world you're in. Um, I'm filming these things in Canada and our regular flour is actually a terrific uh, bread flour. Um, there's lots of other places in the world, however, where the flour isn't so great. The regular flour isn't so great for making bread. Basically, in the United States, you need to buy bread flour. Regular all-purpose flour is not very good. In Canada, you can stick with all-purpose flour. Other parts of the world, look on the supermarket shelves and see if there's um, a specific bread flour. You don't want cake and pastry flour. That's a different deal entirely. You want bread flour, okay? Um, so, I'm using uh, all-purpose flour, uh, just regular unbleached white. Um, and I'm going to add uh, about four and a half to five cups uh, over the course of this to make it right. Now, there's actually an interesting history about um, the baguette, um, that you know, long shape of bread um, that we're making today. Um, I'd always thought that you know, it'd been with the French forever, but um, it hadn't actually. It was the Viennese who invented it in the um, 19th century. And it was known for quite a long time as Viennese bread. And then, and I guess one of the reasons it came about was that the, um, during the 19th century, of course, steam power became very important. Um, and uh, steam came to ovens in the 19th century as well. The uh, Viennese had started to found a way to inject steam into their um, industrial-sized uh, ovens. And that steam, as I said before, uh, helps give bread a nice crunch to it um, because it caramelizes the outer skin of the bread. And um, but the French didn't start going in for baguettes uh, and steam-infused steam baguettes until the 20th century. And what happened was in around 1920, the uh, French labor laws changed. And uh, the laws dictated from that point onwards that no one was allowed to get to work before 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, that was a problem for the uh, bakers, seeing as uh, traditionally bakers in France had been making um, sourdough round loaves. Uh, and um, those things take a long time to rise. There's nothing fast about a sourdough rise. And so if they wanted to be able to feed the breakfast crowd, uh, who wanted fresh bread every morning, then getting in at 4 o'clock in the morning or later wasn't going to do it. There wouldn't be enough time to get the bread to rise. So they uh, took on the Viennese method of making these long, thin loaves. And one of the things which it changed was, in the 19th century, they finally isolated yeast, like under the microscope, and then, then in labs, and figured out how to, how to actually um, concentrate it. And um, they started making uh, these yeast cakes that you could buy. Um, and that made a big difference because it um, allowed people to get away from sourdoughs, which were a slower rise, and the instant yeasts like we're using now, which are the descendants of those first yeasts, um, those first industrial yeasts, um, they have a lot more oomph to them, a lot more power. So uh, they were able to start making bread at like 4 o'clock in the morning and have it ready for 7 o'clock in the morning when people started coming by to uh, buy their breakfast bread. And what they found was that there was an added bonus to making these long, thin loaves in that when you make a really thin baguette, it uh, has a lot of surface area, right? You think about, you know, uh, a round bread, which is this big, versus a long stick. Well, there's a lot more surface area on the stick. And so the, uh, the bread goes stale really quickly. Um, so uh, they were finding that it was perfect because their customers had to come back the next day because that morning's bread would go stale by the evening. There was no eating it the next day. Now, the bread I'm going to show you how to make today is uh, thicker than the thin baguette, so you don't have to worry about it going stale. So um, what I've been doing here, just in terms of making this bread, is uh, I've finished mixing in all the flour, of course, and now I'm just kneading it. And to knead it, what I do is I just get my fingers in there. I'm sort of folding it in on itself. And then, every once in a while, I push it down into the bowl, press it flat with one hand, fold it over on itself like a sandwich, and then press that flat. And you just keep doing that over and over until it starts to feel elastic. Elastic and pliable in your hands, because it's, it's absorbing heat from you as well, so you'll feel it warming up. 
and this one is almost done actually. See, it, it easily becomes a ball. And if you've made it too dry, if you've added too much flour, you'll find that it sort of falls apart in chunks. Whereas um, if you just add the flour slowly, um, so that you can sort of keep on top of the moisture content, you'll get a ball like this. This one's just a little bit tacky, so I'm gonna put it down one more time. Let's give it a slight dusting of flour. So this ball of dough will need an hour to rise. Uh, during that time, it should double in size. If you're in a cold place, say in the middle of winter or just uh, in a drafty cold place, it might take a little bit more than an hour. But you want it to double in size. And um, when it's done that, uh, we'll be ready to roll it out and uh, make it into the right shape. So uh, the last step here is I'm just going to scrape away all of the excess flour. To the compost. Add just a little bit of vegetable oil, like a, a, tablespoon, a tablespoon or so of oil. Spread it around the bowl like this. And then just put the dough ball in there. Turn it over once and again. And then cover it with a tea towel and preferably a, a damp tea towel. Um, so once you've got it covered, just leave it for an hour. As I said, it'll double in size. Leave it for a little bit more than an hour if it doesn't double uh, quite that quickly because it's cold. And um, I'll be back and I'll show you the next step. See you in a bit. Okay, so I'm back. It's been a little bit over an hour. But as you can see, it's nicely doubled now. So let's deflate the dough, literally punch it down, okay? When you punch it down, it deflates, which is good. So to make this bread um, into the baguette shape, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide this dough ball into two pieces um, because that's how big it takes. Um, we'll divide it into two pieces and then we'll roll out each piece. Now to do this, you will have to put a little bit of flour on the counter and have a rolling pin on standby so we can roll it out. So, okay, so that's like that. I'm just gonna squeeze it in the middle to try and make two equal sized pieces, more or less. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so we'll start with this one. Back to the side, there's my bread ball. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on the uh, counter, like this. Just spread it around like that. Okay, and also, we should get this ready. So, for this, get the three jars lined up in a row, so they would create a barrier in the middle. So there's my three jars lined up in a row. And they don't have to be exactly the same size. As long as they build a wall that the bread can't get through, that's fine. And don't worry, the bread will keep them from rolling around in the middle. And next, just take a piece of parchment paper and just lie it down like that. Okay, it just needs to cover it. Don't worry, the bread will hold it down. And <clears throat> take a little bit of oil from the pan and just do the ends, okay? Because you don't want the bread to stick at the end. The bread won't stick to the parchment paper. It will stick to any spot on the metal which is uh, left exposed. And you may not have this problem if your pan's a little bit smaller than mine. Okay, so that is ready to take the bread. Now we just have to roll it out. So, get some flour on your counter like this. Just squeeze the bread a little bit. Press it down with your hand at first. Then take a um, rolling pin. Roll the rolling pin in some flour so it won't stick to the bread. Okay. And then just push down on it. And what we want to do is uh, build a rectangle. We want to make a rectangle which is longer, longer this way than this way. Okay. And it just takes a minute or two to roll it out. And ideally, it's all sort of, it's, a, it's all the same um, height. And the height's about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so. Maybe 
maybe a centimeter or so. So just roll it out. <clears throat> and how easy it is to roll out will depend on how hot it is in your house. Like these things are so dependent on temperature and humidity. And that's what makes it interesting. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll it out that way. And what you wanna do in terms of the length of the bread, right? You don't wanna make it longer than your pan. So just try to make sure that its longest dimension isn't longer than the pan. So that's looking pretty good. That's about the right height. So I'm just gonna put it sideways now. And I'm gonna put some flour there because when we roll this up, I wanna roll it over the flour. The dusting of the flour actually makes this look cool. So um, don't feel that it's bad if you see white flour sitting on it. It's actually a good thing. It's basically a rectangle. It's longer this way than this way. And now I'm just gonna roll it up like a jelly roll. So just start at this edge and roll it. Roll it like that. There's one roll. And then I'm gonna roll it one more time in the flour like that. I'm gonna do it like this. If I leave it like this, we'll get ends like this, right? And this will only get bigger as it rises. And I don't want that. What I want is it to have those nice closed ends <clears throat> that you get with a baguette, right? I mean, a baguette has a closed end. You don't see like an overlap like that on it. Rather, you see it closed. So the way to do that, it's very simple actually. You just take this end and you pull it over. Just pull it over the exposed part and then you pinch it underneath. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Hopefully these cameras can get this. So just pull it over very elastic so it's easy to do and pinch it under and then this one is a little bit uneven so I'm just gonna pinch it along a bit so it has more or less an even shape I don't I don't really care if it's absolutely even seeing as this is homemade bread so a little bit of imperfection actually gives it its charm so now I'm gonna lift it over there just gonna take it from the bottom lift it place it in Make sure you can see how that works. You see that? Sorry, kind of. And now we're just going to do the other one. Okay, so exactly the same process with the next one. So just squeeze out the bubbles. Looks good to me, so I'm going to put it into the pan. Lift it up, put it down. So that's what it looks like now, okay? And now I'm just gonna put a towel on top of it and let it rise again for an hour. I'm gonna cover these things up. I will be back in an hour and uh, these will have expanded quite a bit. And then we'll do the scorings and we'll put them in the oven and then we'll get some fabulous baguettes. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I'm back. It's been about an hour or so since uh, I last saw you in terms of my time and our breads have risen very nicely. See there, see that? Um, so the next step uh, is we're gonna put them in the oven. Now, um, while, uh, while we were on that break, I put the oven on to a 425 convection bake, um, and I also put a pan of water in there, and the water, of course, will create a nice steamy environment for these guys. So our next step is just to put some slashes in them. You look on the baguette, right? Baguettes have slashes. And the way you get those slashes is using a knife. Now, you, you may read in books that you need a razor blade for this. I've tried that, but I've, I've had sort of uneven results with the razor blades. Whereas if you take a serrated knife, dip it into water, okay? Shake it out a little bit. And the real trick is just doing it fast. One, two, three. Literally just one, two, three. You don't wanna go deep. Um, you just want to do one, two, three, and there's various ways of doing this. You can do it sideways, but I prefer to do it lengthwise um, because that um, gives you a really nice spread. So, just going to do this again, and here we go. So remember, one, two, three. That's the right idea. I'm just going to turn around. Okay. Remember, really fast, one, two, three. There we go. 
So, hopefully the little camera can see this. Um, the slices start to open up immediately. Uh, I haven't deflated the bread, which is good. Um, it's uh, still nice and puffy. So I'm gonna put these things in now. Um, they're gonna be in for 22 minutes exactly. That's how long this takes, I find. Um, and uh, when I open the oven, uh, a big burst of steam is going to come out because, of course, there's water in there. So you want to keep your face away from that. Wait for a couple seconds, then put it in. Okay, so here we go. Open it, let the steam come out, and then just put it in. I put it in sideways like this. And now I'm going to set the timer for 22 minutes. And away we go. So I will see you in 22 minutes to look at our wonderful creations. Okay, so it's um, now 22 minutes later. Actually, a couple minutes past 22 minutes, because what I did was, at 22 minutes, I took the breads. Ah, it's all falling apart now, but I took the breads out of here, and I put them back in just so that we could get a little more crustiness on the sides. And now I'm going to take them out and show you how they look. There's one. Here's the next one. So this is this is the thing that we bought in the store, and this is what we made at home. Ours are a little bit thicker, of course, but they'll last a little bit longer as a result. But they have that same nice look. You can see how the slices worked. So these things make great, great sandwich bread. They're um, the kids insist on them for lunches now. If you try this, your friends will be amazed, as will your family. So give it a go. And let me uh, know how it turns out. Send me some pictures. Um, I love getting letters from you guys. I get them from all over the world, so please send them in. So, Steve the Bread Guy signing off. Try this. You'll like it. Bye-bye.